All right, and we're recording. We're doing uh, Beyonce objects, except instead of having the object right there in the file with you, we're going to put it in API. So I will throw it in an API for you. And here's what that looks like. All right, first, let me track it down. All right, so this one will be, put this over here, MKCD uh, Beyonce API. So this is gonna have some data, it's also an NPM project. So we'll do all that. We'll install Express and Cores. And then we're going to bring in Express. We're going to make an app out of it. We're also going to bring in cores. Oops. We're going to tell the app to use cores to tell the app that it needs to listen on whatever port has been configure, configured or failing that ask you 8000 all right and then if you make a request to let's see All right, I'm going to put hits and movies in on two different endpoints. So this will be const hits. Uh, this one will be const movies. All right, so I've got hits and movies here. I'm going to export those. Hits, movies. Cool. And then I'm going to import that data from there. And I want a hits endpoint. That um, sends back the hits as JSON. And I want one that does the same thing with movies. Cool. I think that's it. So let me, oh, I need to add the start script. Um, get a knit it. And how about I see if this works? Is that what it just did? Oh, I put it in test. All right, let's see if it works. Insomnia. If I go to localhost 8000 and try to get the movies, do I get them? Looks like a bunch of movies to me. What about hits? Looks like a bunch of hits to me. All right, so this API works. Um, I am 
going to ignore the node modules. Uh, everything else looks fine. Let's head over to uh, Heroku. Ah, Beyonce API is taken. Uh, Beyonce object API. All right, I'll take it. Grab that git URL. Git remote add origin pew pew. Git push u origin master. All right, slick. Now it is on the public internet. All right, I'm throwing this in Zoom chat. Those are your two API endpoints. So, Let's pull up the list of things that we got to do. I'm going to take these and I'm going to Hmm. I'm just going to put it right here for right now. Let's say API touch read me to ND. All right, you can do this on your local computer. You can do this on Sandbox. We're going to go through these together. Um, I'm going to throw this on GitHub also. Okay. Did not. Why doesn't it show my README? Oh, because I haven't committed it. All right, here's the uh, big old list of things in Zoom chat. Let's head on over to Code Sandbox. Uh, make a vanilla app.
delete all this. Hey, while we're at it, let's like integrate this. Let's uh, grab the app. Uh, document dot query selector app. And then we can use that in our code to um, actually see the results. Okay, first problem. Print all the songs. So I'm going to do this one, and then you're going to do the next one. So to print all the songs, I copy that uh, endpoint. I'm going to fetch from the hits URL, then I'm going to parse the response, then I'm going to take my uh, parsed response, which should give me some hits that I can pull out. And so that should be an array of objects. So I should be able to do something like hits.map. I need something to put on the page. So maybe it's the title. Okay, give me the title for every hit. So now this expression evaluates to an array of titles. And then for each title, um, maybe I do something like, um, oh, actually, I could, turn it, I could map it again and turn it into a DOM element. So like, Document dot create element p p dot text content equals title return p so then these are going to be DOM elements now and I could say like for each one of the titles append that to the page. So walking through it, fetch from the API URL, parse the response, grab the hits out because it comes back as like that. It's got this top level hits key that I need to pull out. Turn each of those objects into titles. So I have an array of objects, then I get an array of titles, strings. Then take every one of those titles, make an element, set the text content to its title, um, return the element. So then take all of those elements that I make and add them to the page. Then I get that. Questions about this? Would you be able to explain, I'm sorry if you've already done this, uh, explain why the variable name for hits is in these curly brackets here on line eight? Absolutely. That's called destructuring. It's the exact same thing as doing this. Okay. That line of code and that line of code are identical. And it's a really common thing to do, so there's a little shorthand for it. Yeah, I just missed it because I wouldn't even cut that shot. <laughs> Other questions? Cool. 
Cool, your turn. So I want you to do it with, what's the next one? Print all the movies. So I want you to take the movies URL. It's in chat if you want to copy and paste it. Print all the movies. You can print all the titles of the movies. You can print any part of the movie you want. Doesn't matter to me. But take a couple minutes, see if you can get that to work. Go!
All right, pencils down. Give me a thumb scale. Were you able to pull this off? Some sideways, some down, some up, some down, some down, some sideways. All right, let's walk through it again. First thing that we need to do, we need to get the data. So we need to fetch the movie's URL. Parse the response. Take our parsed response. And then, oh, I can't remember what that key was called. So I take a look at what the thing was. And there's an array of eight movies. Ask me some questions about that part. Anything confusing there? I got stuck looking for that um, URL website and yeah. forgot about console.log. And um, yeah. What? What is the, I keep putting call it suicide. What's it called? I don't know why. Uh, the URL is in so, uh, Insomnia. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions about this part? Also note, these are just functions. They don't have names. That's the parameter. That's the return statement. So dot then has one argument. It's this function. Just like with map and filter and reduce and whatever else, the browser is going to call this function whenever the response comes back. And when that response comes back, it's going to call the JSON method of this response that it got. That's how that works. This one's the same thing. It doesn't have the implicit return from the one line. So we had to use the braces to open it up. That's the parameter. That's what this return statement evaluated to. That's the parameter there. And then we can do whatever we want with it in this function body. All right. so. The top level of this is called movies. So what happens if I just log movies? All right, I get back an array of eight objects. Neat. What if I, uh, nothing fancy. What if I just iterate over these and like log the titles? Like for let movie of parsed response dot movies console log movie dot title hey look logged a bunch of things so could I also just like make those DOM elements And could I make the text content? By the way, I don't know where it comes from, but about half of the class does inner text all the time, and it drives me crazy. Me. Never use inner text. Text content is how you put text on uh, on an element. Um, so we could do that movie.title maybe. And then throw P on the page. Hey, look, there they all are. So I could do it that way. Or, the way I was doing it before, I could say, take the parsed response. Let 
map over it. Um, and then I'm going to put a function here. So it'll be the response, or sorry, the parse response dot movies is what I want. Never mind. And then I want each movie. And for each movie, I just want its title. So that turns an array of objects into an array of strings. Uh, I want to map over that again. Take each title and turn it into a DOM element. Same thing I'm doing here. And then I want to each over those, take these DOM elements that I just made and append them to the page. That's title. Oop. That's no good. Oh, it's because I didn't return anything out of here. There they are. Twice. So we could do it like that. We could do it like that. Same thing fundamentally though. I got an array. No one had a problem with that part. Two different ways to iterate through this and put stuff on the page. Questions? If you wanted to add the title and the year, would you have to do uh, movie.title and then a comma and a space and then movie.year in the same? No, I know what you're talking about. What that means is I don't want to strip this down to just the title anymore. Um, like I couldn't, I can't do like that movie dot year movie dot like what like I can't do something like that because um, functions can only return one thing. Then this is the case in every language I can think of except Go. Um, you can only return one thing out of a function. That one thing can be an object, it can be an array, it can be like something that sort of collects other things together. But if I wanted to do that, I would either have to do something like uh, movie.title and movie.year as a single array that I can return. But then like the thing I'm getting out of the next thing is gonna be like looking for those, or I could say, no, it's cool. It returns an object with where the title is the movie title and the year is the movie year or whatever the property is. And that's fine. That's essentially just like stripping out everything in this that wasn't those. That's okay. Or what probably makes more sense is then not doing the map at all and just bring in movie directly and then saying, all right, I want the text content of this to be something like interpolate the title. I guess it'd be movie.title. And movie.year. I don't know why it's mad at me. Let's see, was it year? Uh oh. Oh, I'm not running the server anymore. Let's take a look at what's in movie. Oop, there we go. That yeah, was title you Oh. And so if I get rid of. Those loops. There you go. So before what I was doing is I was taking the movie object uh, and turning it into just the title. If I need more than that, eh, maybe I just keep the movie object as is. And now I have access to both of those here.
Questions? All right, I'm gonna make you do it again. Questions before I wipe it. Are you able to put it back to when we were just getting the title? Yeah, sure. that yeah thank you other questions oops except it was that's right I needed to return the P also there it is all right Don't transcribe it. Don't look at your notes. Try to do it off the top of your head. Write the code that prints all the movies. Go!
Kyle, is there something else we need to do to activate? Because I'm not getting, I mean, I'm not getting any errors. Uh, I've cleared off all my errors, but I'm not showing anything in my console Did log you save? either. Yes. Um, give me just a second. Okay, time to weigh in. Give me a thumb scale. Were you able to get it to show up? Not so much, not so much. Sorta, kinda, yes. Not so much, yes. Sorta, sorta, not really. All right, talk to me, what's the problem? Matt, why don't you uh, screen share, let's take a look at yours. Okay. Okay. So I, I had the uh, the other one on here. I just commented okay. out. So, but here here we are. And over here, you can see I got no problems, but. All Nothing right, else you happening. are fetching the movie's URL. Is the movie's URL still in scope? Yep. You are parsing the response. You're taking the parsed response, logging it, not seeing anything. Refresh your browser. Not, not like your browser, that kind of internal one. Yeah. Um... Yeah, that's really not doing anything there. Um, oh, you're in problems. Go to the console. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, refresh that internal browser again. All right, now let's um, let's throw a catch handler on this. So after line 34, um, throw a catch handler on the end. Oop, how do we do, we do catch handlers? Um, it's going to chain off string. of the end of that closing paren. Just like we did with like then and stuff. Yeah, dot catch. Cool, uh, and it works otherwise just like dot then. So invoke it, it takes a function in. Uh, is it butted up against it or the space? So like this? Just like that. Okay. Uh, the parameter for the function is error. Is that in the... Um... Just like that. Okay. Is it dot error or just straight error? Just error, it's a parameter for the function. Okay. So then now you're going to arrow it. That's, uh, that's not how you do that. There we are. And then uh, you're going to open up a body. And in here, you're going to console.error. Uh, Error.message. Uh. 
Is it? Just like that. Okay. Pew pew. All right, save that. And let's see if it's maybe swallowing some errors that would help us. Oop, with your, with your keyboard, with your keyboard, Matt. Control C. Sorry. Or Control S. Um, all right. At this point, I would refresh your browser browser because I think it got disconnected. I would copy your code first because it may disappear. It may disappear. Oh, yeah, it might. But whatever. We'll be fine. I have refreshed it before, and I didn't lose my code. Uh, so I've tried everything uh, for the past, like, 20 minutes, and it's just, like, I refreshed that. I refreshed the other things. It's, like, it's just not doing anything. All right, open up that console. Let me see your index.html. Oh, yeah, you, uh, it's not running the JavaScript. So, okay, so I commented it out because um, I, I was getting an error saying, here, could not find module and path. Yeah, it's in a folder called source. So it's going to be source slash index.js. Hey, we see a array showing up now. Okay. And we're seeing an error. Cannot uh, read property of null, reading append. So uh, head back over to your uh, dribble script. So it says, cannot read property of null, append. Append is on line 32, so that tells us that app is null. Um, so let's find where you're defining app. Uh, Document.query query selector dollar sign app. Let me take a look at your HTML. It's supposed to be dollar sign app. I, did I? There's no, no dollar just, sign app. No, it, it should be pound app. It's supposed to be. It should be pound. Okay. Um, uh, let me see your HTML. Hey, what do you know? There's not a, a element with an ID of app in there. So replace your body with, uh, it could be anything, just a div with an ID of app. It's not JavaScript, though. Those uh, attributes should be right next to each other. There we are. Uh, and put it in quotes. There we go. Ta-da! All right, so okay. before we go into our end of day kinds of things, let's walk through this. First of all, tell me what was tricky. What was what, what were you getting stuck on? I was fine doing the parsing and everything, but when it came to like the map, uh, the mapping for whatever reason, that's where my brain was like shutting down. Sure. So, I don't know why, because we've done it before. Well, that just means you haven't done it enough yet. None of this stuff is stuff that anybody gets the first time. All right, so we do all this stuff. Take our parsed response and log it. All right, any questions about this far? Next thing, we'll take the movies out of parseResponse.movies. You could do it that way, or you could destructure it out. Either way is fine. That's legit. Uh, and then make it easy on yourself. Can you, uh, whichever way you're most comfortable iterating, let's do it with a for loop. Let movie of movies. And I want to make a DOM element, so I got to give it a variable. I got to run this create command. I got to say what kind of element I want it to be. I have to say what should go inside of the element. 
So like maybe the movie title. And then I got to put that on the page. That'll work. It's a longer way to do it, but uses our map filter reduce kind of chops. We could take movies and map over it. Map takes a function and it uh, some kind of transformer. So this transformer could take in a movie, grab the title. So this is an array of movie objects. This is an array of strings. That's an array of movie objects. That's an array of strings. Different expressions. That expression evaluates to an array of movie objects. The whole expression evaluates to an array of strings. Well, an array of strings, I could turn into an array of DOM elements based on those strings. So if these are all titles, the transform is that it takes in a title, makes an element, sets the text content of that to whatever the title that I stripped out was, returns the new element. So it transforms this string, because remember this was an array of strings, this is each string, takes that string, the return statement in this function is the element. So back over to, uh, where'd it go? This is Dream Girls, Austin Powers, whatever. And this is turn that title into a DOM element. So I get the Dream Girls DOM element and the Austin Powers element. Turn an array of titles into an array of elements. And then I, um, for each paragraph, The action that I want to take is appending the paragraph. And there they are. Array of movie objects, array of titles, array of DOM elements, uh, uh, adds all the DOM elements to the page. Ask me questions about it. You make it look so easy. It's almost like I've been doing this once or twice. So just so I understand, the p.txt content equals title mm -hmm. is coming from the dot map title. So with this one, I, uh, I ended up with an array that was like Austin Powers and Dream Girls, et cetera. So that means each one of these was one of those strings. That's the transform. I made an empty DOM element. I set the text of that element to Austin Powers or Dream Girls or Obsessed. And then I returned the element. So that turned the title into a P tag that has the title. Turned the string Austin Powers into a P tag that has Austin Powers as its content. Turned the string Dream Girls into a DOM element that has Dream Girls as its content. So then that's what all of those are. These are the DOM elements, then I add them to the page. But yeah, that came from there. That's the transform.
So if you didn't have the four each, mm -hmm. how would it look? Like, uh, how would it display on the... It would look like nothing. Because I made a bunch of DOM elements, and then I didn't do anything with them. You can make DOM elements without adding them to the page. Nothing happens until something gets added to the page. So I had a different thing in the for each, um, but as long as you have the dollar sign and they match whatever in the parameters, they work. But if you just put in the, when I tried it without the dollar sign in there, mm -hmm. it didn't do anything. Like, so if you made that a different word and they matched and there was no dollar sign, yep. it didn't work. Still works. All they have to do is match. Maybe maybe it worked and I just didn't think it did. It, it's working now. Alright. Yeah, these can all be whatever. Code sandbox is crazy slow for me. Mine finally worked. I just thought it was dead. More questions. So what's the difference between doing that? So like where you have the return P. Yeah. Uh, if you did the app.append there. Totally could. So if I do this, instead of returning the P, I could put that there, get rid of my return statement, get rid of this for each. Holy smokes, still works. It's really not a map anymore, because if it doesn't return anything, nothing is being transformed. So that's really a for each. And if, uh, all right, all this does is turn that into the title. All right, so if I did, just called that movie, and then called this movie.title, I really don't need that one either. Still works. But the reason to break that up, this is like, uh, this is a couple of different things. And in, as part of our goal to make functions do fewer things, that's why it was split up into steps. And you should be able to like work uh, those like map and filter and find pipelines and stuff. So it's good practice for that. But fundamentally, this is all that's happening. And that should look an awful lot like that same code that we did with four, where we were doing like let movie of movies. I mean, we can literally copy this thing straight in. Because that and that are the same thing. Questions? All right. So, um, what I'd like you to do at least a little bit over the break, you should also take a break. Um, but a little bit. See if you can build and burn that map filter reduce um, exercise. Do it a whole bunch of times. Do it until you've got these things memorized cold. Um, do it while you're watching TV. Uh, just sitting around with the family. See if you can just crash through that repo a couple times. And I'd like to see if you can do the Beyonce stuff like this, pulling it off the network. If you can do that, Ta-da! You're a front-end web developer. That's it. That's all we do. We get data from the internet. We do stuff with it. <laughs>